top five. Yeah, top yeah, three, top, top, top two, top two, top two. Yeah, t- top two. That's my man. KD's the best player in the NBA right now. Absolutely, he's been for like the past two years. He's not the MVP though. I agree, but he's been the best player in the NBA. For I agree. The past I, two I agree. KD don't get his just due. Like yeah, he, said. he is. This hey, year yo, he is. This year he is. There's no. No, 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 no. KD started that I'm strapping niggas up shit last year. Yeah, he did start. He started last year, but this year he really, he really, it see minute in. There's no, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he already got one, so you can't even say shit about him. So, all right, Hope, y'all think that nigga out after this year? Oh, KD? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm, yeah. 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 They talking about the Knicks. No, nah, he going to say the Clippers. You think so? I'm going to say Clippers, bro. Nah, nah. I don't hey, know man, Kawhi, what Kawhi is he, he Kawhi weird, yo. He Kawhi might do anything, probably fuck around, go to the Phoenix Suns or some dumb <laughs> shit. You don't even know about Joe. Right, right. Nigga laugh like saying, that, yeah. he unpredictable, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yo. <laughs> Your laugh uh, was too devilish, bro. Like, that laugh is an untrustworthy but laugh. But Joe just kill and don't say nothing. Straight face. No, he talk now. You ain't seen him tonight? Bit, yeah, he yeah. talk now. Yeah, that's their scrap politics in the background. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I'm trying to get background. everything go, going and, and, and being copacetic and things Just like that. Just the first one, baby. Just yeah, the first one. No. Well, years, months. Well, and what we discussing, if y'all just tuning in, we discussing the NBA playoffs, you know what I mean? And who got the best chance of winning. But, you know, right now, who, you know, who is the best player in the world? Who would you, who, who would you, how about this? I, I'll say this. If you had, and even though you don't hoop, I mean, or whatnot. That's not that don't, you. That know. don't mean nothing about you nothing. Had, no, I grew up on hooping. You no, know I'm saying if you had one player, you would model your game. If I was personally hooping, if you was and again NBA hooping, right now, and the NBA right now, if there's one person you say, yo, hey, yo, all right. If I was a hooper, oh, I'd play like yo, Dame Lillard. Mm. I can see that. Yeah, the personality. Dang. I can see that. That's yeah. a fact. I can see that. Cold hard to kill it. Scrap, Don't say nothing. Scrap, who would you who would you say you would model your game at? Yo? If there was one person that you model your game at, then you say, yo, I'm playing like yo. Who is it? Um Dang, that's tough, yo. Um throwing bangers early. Damn, who the because yo, it'd be that the niggas who I fuck with, but then they make me mad, so I don't want to put, I don't want to like them. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> you gotta pick just one. one, yo. Just one, my bro. You gotta pick one, just one. Lamar Odom. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Yeah. No shit, Lamar. Odom. Oh, if that? I can have Lamar Odom's game, shit, put my put my heart in Lamar Odom and it's old. Sure. No. Okay. That's fifty okay. a game. Lamar, that, yeah. that nigga, really, yeah. he That's the reason they won them next championship. Nah, that was Lamar Odom real. right there. That's fifty ten. ten. Yeah, yeah, I had to get make niggas think. Pull his highlights up, and then you'll see what I'm Facts. saying. You know he's playing in a big three, right? I, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my man, Dante Green, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got uh, drafted Dante. number 12 in the uh, big three yeah, draft. Bro, I, I, know that. I, think, up, I think Josh yeah, yeah. got drafted too, right? Yeah, I don't know the number he got drafted. I, yeah, because him and Josh rolled together. Shelby? Yeah, that's up. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's up. As long as you got drafted, that shit don't Yeah, Baltimore was in the house. You know what I mean? Shout out to my man, Corsley, Corsley playing. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, we got the bottom was definitely tied. in the building we in the big three, we definitely. Yeah. Hey, yo, and, and this what this what a lot of kids don't understand though. Let's get to that. This what a lot of kids don't understand. The grind. See, what you have is now a lot of people who like yo just feel like they know shit. So like yo, they'll look at something like oh oh Dante uh Josh and say, Oh, they underachieve. How the fuck do you underachieve by ending up playing and doing something that you love to do and making some money doing it. No matter what level you playing on or where you playing at, both of them dudes both are about to get paid to do something that they love. If it's three on three, one on fucking one, to skip them and leave you in the park by yourself, Thanks. it don't matter. It don't matter. And that, yo, that's the, what I'm saying is that's the problem is, yo, you got a lot of motherfuckers that, see, and that's what we not going to do. Yo, we we will give as many, uh, opinion, yeah, uh, opinion. But you can judge people. Like even while we just were sitting there talking, we talked about just the hooper. You feel me? Like you got niggas that's really judging people based off of what they do as far as basketball. Oh yeah, Dante soft. He's soft because he tall and don't want to go and play like Shaq. Or do he just play his game? You feel me? You sometimes you gotta really sit there. judging people based off of what they do. As sometimes far as you gotta really sit oh, yeah, Dante think. soft. He saw what you're saying because you don't want to go and say like Shaq 
what, you know what I mean? What you're saying can affect people. You feel me? You sometimes you gotta sit there and think that shit off of what they do. Oh yeah, I think for real, for real, like. I think that people don't really understand what it takes to get to that level, Facts. that grind. You know what I mean? The fact that, you know, he done play college, he done play pro, he done probably play overseas. You know, he could easily just stop hooping and do something else. But the fact that he's sticking with the grind, now he got another opportunity. You know, the fact that he stuck with the grind, the opportunity right. came and now he ready. Bro. Now he about to play on a, on a big stage or something. Mm-hmm. Facts. You know what I mean? So people can't even understand, like, how tough you got to be mentally to even – Continue to go through that rock grind while living life too. Yo, you know what I mean, right? It's a, it's a. What's a, What's the word, yo? I'm looking for, yo. For I was just having a conversation with the dude coach from one, one of my coaches, one of our coaches. I don't like say my. You gonna hear me say our a lot because I don't make nothing about me. Yo, one of our coaches or whatnot. The dude coach from Scrap, man. Yeah, shout out to coach yeah, from. That's like one. I, I I say he's a mentor to me just because he's not just because he's older. But yeah, that wisdom, but like, yo, just your way of thinking is different. You feel me? And yo will put you in pockets where you got to really sit there and like think. You feel me? Like, yo, a lot of motherfuckers don't like knowing that because that means you got to be accountable at some point in time for you. Oh, they get uncomfortable. You get uncomfortable, yo. You feel me? And like, yo, we were sitting there having a conversation and he was like, we was talking about all the shit that was going on with all the kids and everything that's going on like that. And he was like, man, he said, motherfuckers you, don't like knowing said, that because that means he said, yo, I don't think none of these kids really. He said, maybe, maybe I was about to scrap, no, but the other day I gave food and we had, I gave a film session to the kids. And we just sat there and watched the film. I ain't said a word. I said, yo, I just want y'all to watch. It was nothing but their mistakes. Mm-hmm. Scrap made the film. Facts. Stuff. You feel me? And yo, I sat there, I came, I bought pizza. From a bitch, man, I said, yo, I'm not going to say nothing because I know what that did for me as a player. See, the difference with y'all is I've been watching myself and videos and shit since I was playing in y'all grade. When I had any film or footage that my parents used to take of a game, I used to literally go home and watch yeah, that shit. Yeah, it's important repeat. for kids to see themselves. You feel me? Like, yo, because right. when I used to watch them little DVDs, them NBA DVDs they used to come out with, right. them little VHSs, they used to always have the best players on there and all they should talk about was how much film they watch. Right. How much basketball they watch. So I was like, shit, if I'm going to be good, I got to watch the same thing. You feel me? So I knew what it meant to sacrifice going outside, right. being on the phone, talking to girls, doing the shit that I want to do. And, and yo, Coach Ron, he put me in a place where I had to think about that. He was like, you know, I don't think these kids really realize what you sacrifice. Right. And yo, I was like, damn. He was like, you know, like, no, nah, like, you know, what you, what you sacrifice, like, they're just judging you now, I think, because you've been around them for a while as a as a coach they don't really realize that you are only six months removed from playing basketball right and you didn't have to be here so like yo when you now got to take a step back and just and then what it made me do was like yo scrap just sent me the video i just was gonna send it out but at first i was like hold up hey yo if i'm not giving them what i got like totally then i'm doing them a disservice right you can't really make them see what you see unless they see what you see. You feel what I'm saying? So, yo, it's the same thing and everything else. Like, yo, these will judge people based off of what they see. Yo, instead of really taking the time to see what the person see and showing them what you might see to see if you really might not even fuck with what they, what their vision is or whatever the fuck it is. Like, you looking at, I'm using Dante as an example. You looking at him as a hooper, but do you know that, man? Right. Call himself. Do you know that man got to carry a lot on his shoulders from his family and shit that he been through? We know this because that's like a brother does. You feel me? But do you know, like, it's just certain shit that you hear because we live in Baltimore. You know what I mean? Like, yo, we live in Baltimore. So, like, yo, I see dudes do that shit. And then when they see him down on Brunson and they see him somewhere, they back him up. But that shit be whole shit to me. Because, like, yo, I'm going to call you soft on the court and tell you, yeah, yo, you soft as shit. Like, after we leave that court, yo. You a man. Right. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. You a man. I'm not about to give on no internet and call you out your name. Right. Or or like you a man, yo. You a man. And I don't think dudes really look like nigga. I don't know. I know what you sacrificed to get where you got. Cause I did it myself trying to get there where you got. And you went way further than me. So I know what you sacrificed. And I still went far. You feel me? So like, yo, damn, I can only imagine what it felt like to have like nigga Dante was a number two recruit in the nation. Fuck you gonna call himself and he walked around with that on his back right for the longest. 
had to carry that weight and it still comes home and walks around his city with his head high, knowing that people call him soft. Right. That's the total opposite of soft. You feel right. me? If, if, I mean, well, you're going to have haters, yo. You know what I'm that, saying? But, like, um, that's not hate. Day. Like, I don't, no, I don't feel well, like when you get to a certain no more, level, bro. no, when you get to any type of success, yo, you're going to have people that's going to say dumb shit about you or, or hate on you. You feel me? So, you gotta ignore that type of shit. I, don't, I, don't, you know I can't call that hate, bro. Like, like when when you when you start calling people shit that you're or doing shit to people that you don't really you don't even know. Like that's envy. hate and envy two totally different things. That's niggas looking at you and wishing they had what you had. Facts. Hate is when like nah, nigga, I don't fuck with that nigga. That's hate. That's totally different. Mm-hmm. And I be trying to get. I, I I'm at thirty now, just understanding the difference. I used to say like, yo, I hate the nigga. Like nah, yo, I ain't hate y'all. I really. Used to really want what Joe had, and knew Joe was the better player and wanted to get that. Mm. I gotta keep it real with myself at thirty. Nah, that mm. one I hate, like nigga. Right. I envy where you what you was doing. You feel me? And that and when I got there, I didn't care about you no more. So I know it wasn't hate. Right. Cause then I was cool. Right. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> that ain't hate. That ain't hate, bro. Hate is the niggas that I didn't like then, and I still don't like your bitch ass now. Like that's hate. Right, I'm right. just saying, <laughs> niggas hating on y'all. You know I'm saying like, yeah, but not yeah, because but then it's a different type of hate where you just hating on a nigga and yeah, and you like just going around telling people you know dirty in a nigga name up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's that's like not playing fair. That's a fact. It's against the rules. It's got yeah. to stop being. But like I said, yo, the the fact that he you know kept grinding and didn't worry about that. Now you got an opportunity, and you're about yeah. to. How many other dudes do you playing game? Ice Cube League? Fetch, you feel me? Fetch. Shout out to Ice Cube. Shout, Shout out to Ice Cube. Cube. Hey, 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 Shout Ice out to him. Black hear, business. You feel me? If you Black ever hear man. us on here, just please reach out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we could definitely, you know, what I mean, commentate the big three game. You feel me? That should be lit, actually. Um, because we so honest. Number one, you know, mm-hmm. and we just gonna give it, and we speak the facts. You know, what I mean, we know the game, everything like that. I no. want to ask you this, scrap. What stops you? Because we 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 just to see the night. We we going off of everything. We got we got time, so we're talking about the playoffs, scores, all that shit. Right. We, it's time to get the noise. What what made you want to say, or did you, at some point in time, be like, yo, nah, basketball, what I want to do in my life? Man, or was it ever a situation where you just like I want to do it, but I just can't lock in the way I want to? Was that more so? For real, for me, it was it was more so that. I ain't even really start hooping like that until I was like in the tenth grade. Hmm. So, whereas though I, by the time I took it serious, it was it was kind of like too late. You, should, mm. you feel me? So, I really just um, played more so in the streets for real, but um, dedicated a whole. That's why I dedicate so much time to my son because I want to open up the opportunities to him. Because for me, like you, it, the only opportunities you could get was word of mouth. You feel me? And me, I moved around a lot, so I, I was missing all the opportunities. Mm. So I just don't want my son to miss that because it's, it's a lot of that shit that was shit that I wanted to be a part of. Right. And then that shit just kept, you know, I, I missed the buck on all that shit. So I just, that's why I pour so much into the harder hype, overhype brand. Mm. You know what I mean? Because that's, yo, you got a strong brand going on and you cultivate the kids. I was just telling Coach today, like when you talk to the kids, you be like, yeah, give me, um, you be like, Oh, are right, you missed that layup? Give me thirty. They be like, you be like, then, what's your grades like? Oh, you got a D. Give me fifty. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, you doing push ups for the rest of the motherfucking practice. You feel me? <laughs> like, yeah, that's I'm like, yo, that's the, exactly what I want my son to be around. You know what I mean? The growing up to be a man because not only I want him to, to to take advantage of what he got. He got you know natural gifts. You know what I mean? Shout out to my son, but I want him to take advantage. I want him to take advantage of his mind too. You feel me? That's why I'm t- I be teaching him all this. Like I teach him how to engineer too. You feel me? Maybe one day he might be an engineer and shit. You feel me? Right. Mm-hmm. Straight like that. I'm teaching him all that just so he got something to lean back on. Maybe school ain't his thing. You feel me? And he can't. He he don't reach the peak to get a gr- degree. I want him to have still be in a position where he can get his own money. Got his own tools. Mm-hmm. Straight like that. So, but no, nah, man. Straight like that. Yo, know, basketball has just been always been a part of my life. All my peoples, you know what I mean, were straight hoopers, you know what I mean? I came up uh, with Debo and Black Adam over there in the corner, Debo, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Debo was that, – that's really who taught me how to play basketball, them niggas. You know, they each one of them. You feel me? Um, 
uh, I, I just seen Debo destroy so many people. Uh, my man V, uh, shout out to my man V, Virgil Singleton, yo. I seen these niggas, yo. Me just coming back to Baltimore in the 11th grade as a motherfucking teenager, yo. I was like maybe 15, just coming back around these niggas. And all these niggas was like six foot three and shit, straight smashing shit, killing grown ass men. They're like, yo, you about to go up the court. I'm like, yo, you can't go up there. It's grown people up there. They're like, man, come on. Straight smashing niggas. I'm like, damn, y'all the goats for real. Like, <laughs> I ain't no nut. I was just a kid coming back from North Carolina country and shit. I'm like, yo, these these really is the niggas. You feel me? Like, yo, Debo was out that bitch killing shit. Like, I'm gonna just give that nigga a shout out one time because yo, a lot of niggas don't give him credit to what he was. I seen him kill everything, like anything that was in front of him. I seen him kill straight right. like that. Like, it don't even matter. Like, yo, I got a witness in the room. Like, I seen him go give Shit, Carmelo, where you could put Carmelo on the Anthony on the phone right now. Somebody got Melo number. Tell him to call into the station, 1500radio.net. <laughs> tell him that Debo give him work down Cloverdale. Am I right? Told, yo, he was mm-hmm. like, yo, if you want yo, he was like, yo, he remind me of, like, now that I got somebody to compare it to, you remind me of Dwayne Wade, don't he? Yeah, he played like D-Wade. Don't That's he? Exactly he played du- like Dwayne Wade, Wade yo, straight like shot, that. With a real mean Bing, bing yo. Shot. Yo, he puts you in the rim, shake you, yeah. assist, shoot, yeah, all that shit. Everything. Yeah, straight like that. My man chopped up everything. And y'all, it was just made me so proud many a days that I've been up Cloverdale on the side and just seeing the whole crowd erupt. And that's my nigga. You feel me? Oh, that was some hey, real ass shit. That's the, hey, hey, yo, on that note. So I want to ask Lance something to say. But on that note, yo, that's the difference, though. And like, you talk about your son and all that, like, you feel me, him hooping and what he's trying to be and all that. And like, yo, all right, I coach your son. Right. You feel me? And I'm gonna tell you the direct difference. And what you doing, even still, trying to instill in him, like taking him to the rec like today. Right. And making him play with the teenagers. Right. See, the difference is when we was coming up, and I don't, when I say, I, I feel like we sound old when we say when we was coming up, cause like, yo, we, just, like, yo, we literally <laughs> just turned 30. No, that's the truth though. But it's the truth, like, yo, the, the time has changed so rapidly. Cause like, yo, from just from the time that I would say 24, 25 to now, it hasn't been like, when I say we was growing up, I'm literally talking about from 20, I say 21 and up. Right. But I could go back way further than that. But like, yo, when we was coming up, bro, you talk about Debo, all these niggas in the neighborhood heroes, these dudes, yo, when we used to go to the court, yo, man, Lil Kurt, we used to go to the court, yo, and we used to play on the other side. Yeah. You feel me, yo? And we used to sit and put our crates. We used to have crates. Right. I remember the crates. Sit out and we used to sit and put our crates. And Big Kurt used to always be yelling at us, making sure that we ain't lose his ball. So we used to have to hold his ball. He used to make us, if we was running around and we maybe left the balls and went outside the fence, he would yell at us and we would end up coming back in and sitting down and sitting on the crates. You feel me? And holding the balls and shit. Holding the basketball balls. You feel me? So <laughs> I got you, I guess. Because right. of the hour we in now. Facts, but whatever. Facts. <laughs> yeah, man. Again, but so yo is we used to sit there watch these dudes hoop, and I remember that I can tell you the very first time that them niggas said to us like Well and James, Debo, and them said to us, "Yo, I want y'all, hey, yo, come on, yo, y'all play, <laughs> like yo, like let us play with them." And from and when I say yo, the reason that I like even even still to this day when I see Debo, yo, I just like he walk with his limp now. All I still just give him that like yo, nigga. He was that crap. Because yeah, sure like we used to go, me, me, Kurt, Steve, used to, all of us, yo, I, we used to go to uh, hoops. Right. And all, that's where you, it was like, yo, in order to say you could hoop, you had to go one of three places. Either hoops, like, is that was open on every Sunday. Everybody went to hoops. Yeah. Everybody went to hoops. No matter where you was from, Thanks. you went to fucking yeah. hoops. You feel me? You went to hoops. I used to go to hoops on a solo dolo. Yo, you feel you me? To hoops. <laughs> it was if you had to go to hoops. Or if, if it wasn't your everyday outside basketball shit, you went to you had to play down Clover there. Fact. You had to. It's a fact. Or you had to play down the dome. One to three. It was one to three. And the dome was like more so for the high school shit. You feel me? So it really was like hoops or clover there, especially for over west. And yo, we used to go up there, yo, and we used to go up there with our own three or four. I mean, we used to fight dudes to get on the court. Dudes you like, nah, yo, y'all, and we used to know, like, yo, we used to have conversations on the side, like, yo, y'all know if we lose, we are never getting back on. These mm-hmm. niggas are not going to let Straight us get like back that. on. And that used to be, like, our adrenaline to go out that bitch. Like, you know how many fights we got in? Because we just was like, right, fuck that, it's point. We cheating, too. Mm. 
You feel me? Fuck that. I'm walking the ball down this end, and, and none of you niggas gonna punch me in my mouth. Mm. Knowing that if one of these niggas punch me in my mouth, this is gonna go so <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah, you feel right. me? Like I'm fucking 14. You know what I mean? But like, yo, the kids nowadays, they don't know what that feel. Yeah, they don't know what it don't. feel like to go to the court and have to fight a nigga for your winners. Yeah. They that's don't know. A, that's a real fact. They, they don't know what it feel like, though. So their hunger for the game is different, bro. They don't know what it feel like to go. Cause like now, it's not even niggas at the court. Niggas go to open gyms. Everybody want to go inside the gym. Yeah. Hey, Everybody want to work can out. I tell, can I tell the story, yo? If you tell me, I can tell the story. I'm telling the story. When the niggas, you was fighting the niggas down the court. Oh, yo, so, no, man. Man. Nah. Please, yo. I'm gonna just keep you anonymous, then, yo. <laughs> Cause it's a classic about fighting for winners. It was all over winners. It's this is a legend. I can, I can, it's a I legend can, story, yo. This I can give. Legend. I can give you. I can give you some of You get winners. strikes for that, yo. You, you get, get strikes, strikes for that. winners. You get strikes for winners, like yo, yeah. like yo. It goes down. But like nigga, I can do one better. Scrap, yo. When we first met Scrap, like we knew him. But like when we met him on the like real live, we used to see him every Sunday. It was up hoops. Yo, me, Bud, and Kurt used to go up hoops and work. And yo, this nigga Scrap used to be up there fucking niggas. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. And, and it was because what, what made us, besides we knew he from around the way, me and Kurt used to be, Kurt used to been told, he was like, yo, he from around the way, yo. My father fuck with him, fuck with him. So I used to be automatically like, yo, if he say he fuck with you, I fuck with you. So niggas just been there like, yo, this nigga Scrap wildin', but I mean, shit. He with us. He with us. <laughs> <laughs> yo, real shit. We good. Real, and, yo, real shit. Nah, I like, yo, know. he with us. And it was like, yo, it was mutual. We used to be wilding. And I can tell yo, she be like, these niggas wilding. But yeah. I'm with them. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Like, yo, it, that these kids know. I was about I, to say, I wasn't the only person in there thugging niggas. No. Like, <laughs> yo, we was all thugging. Because if I seen and them then, niggas, like, like if I'm in there get, and I seen them niggas across to. the gym, I'm like, oh, I'm going extra hard. Because I know I, at least I got them in there. Right. You feel me? Cause yo niggas used to be straight out of pocket and hoops, yo. I yo, swear, you, be a nigga will tell you, yeah. they used to be out of pocket in that a moment. Nigga will tell yeah. you, no, you not on. Yeah, and stand in the middle of the court. Yeah, <laughs> that shit just happened this morning. But kids don't, <laughs> kids don't do that nowadays. Like yo, I mean, and when, and it's not, it's not to promote the confrontation. It's to promote the hunger and the tough. The hunger. heart, you feel and me? The hunger, yo. yeah. The hunger, like yo, all y'all, all y'all, y'all was just watching the same, the fucking uh, Knuckleheads podcast. I was telling them earlier. And Patrick Beverly was on that motherfucker, and he was talking about, yo, you want to know what made me be the way I am? He said, yo, I had a coach when I was in Chicago. And he used, he said, yo, I grew up thinking, he said, for the first two years I played for this man, I thought he hated my guts. He said, and then my mother made me live with this nigga. I had to live with him. Mm. He said, yo, and, and then once I got to live with him, I was like, damn. Yo really loved me for real. He said, yo, like this. He was like, yo, he was tough. He said, yo, because I didn't have a father. So like, yo, he was like, yo, next thing you knew, I realized, like, hold up. Yo like this with everybody. Right. He don't got no cut cards. He said, yo, and that shit, he said, by the time I got to college, man, he was like, yo, you can say whatever you wanted to me. Like he said, yo, that's why I play the way I play with a chip on my shoulder. He said, because he told me back then, like, nigga, he used to tell everybody. He used to look, he said, he said, he said, he said he used to look us all in the gym and tell us, you sorry, you ain't going to be shit. You know, like, right. yo, he says he used to tell us straight up, like, you ain't got the work ethic, so that's dead. Right. Type thing, you know what I mean? He, and he said, yo, he told me, like, yo, you, yeah, you you just got to stay on the straight and narrow. And he used to keep me on the straight and narrow. You feel me? Because I was a knucklehead. You know what I mean? He, and yo, well, he's seen the potential for him. Yeah. But then the fact is that Patrick Beverly actually listened, and that's the problem with hmm. a lot of kids that you work with or you coach. You, you see all the potential for him, but you know, you I'm, can't want it more than somebody wanting for themselves. Mm -hmm. Direct correlation to, because the podcast is with that was is Darius Miles and uh, Quentin Richardson. Yeah, right. Quentin Richardson agreed. Blah 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 blah. You think about the player that Quentin Richardson is, how long he lasted in the league. Look at Patrick Beverly now, how long he's lasting in the league. Made a name for himself, came from overseas, all the above. Yeah. Quentin Richardson, same type of situation. Made a name for himself off getting drafted late, all that. Fast forward, Darius Miles is the only other person a part of the podcast, right? Guess what his response is to that? I mean, I don't, I, I don't agree with that. Like, I, I mean, you could, the, and it, 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 what trips me out about dudes is I don't think people ever listen to themselves, like really listen to themselves talk. Right. You be contradicting yourself twenty four seven. Some people. He said his exact words were, it's "If I, I don't want to say exact words, but I, I quote him. He said, well, I mean, you can coach me hard, but you ain't got to coach me like that.'" I ain't got no problem, excuse me, I don't have no problem with tough coaches, 
or people being tough, but like, you don't gotta get in my face. And you look at what happened in his career. Mm-hmm. Lack of discipline. Yeah, that's a key sign right there. Lack of discipline, bro. Lack of discipline. I mean, you don't like being talked to. You don't, you don't like being yo, you, that mean that mean that mean you have a problem with authority, and that's what he kept bringing up. He, and, and then he said this. He like a lot of dudes don't listen. Then he said this. He said, if my mother heard even heard a coach talking to me like that, my mother would be the first one to say something. But for me, that's a problem, bro. That's a problem. Yeah, you a grown ass yeah, man, and bad. you saying yeah. that it was okay as an eight. You got drafted to the NBA at eighteen, my nigga. You a man, and you saying it's okay for your mother to say no. Don't talk to him like that. Your mother, right? The, the, what's this the game? You feel me? Uh, what's shorty? Uh, what's your mother name? <laughs> Tasha Mack. Tasha Mack. You want to be Tasha Mack so bad? Yeah. His agents, mother, no. and, 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 and that's why these and, niggas and, can't and, grow up. It was dead silence. Between Patrick Beverly and Quit Richards, they just this is one they went on to the next subject. Because it was like yo, one of the mm. things you could tell they was like they killed them with that. Like, bro, you don't even make like yo, know. it's it's colleges out here. I just coached out of college. I ain't gonna say the name, but I just coached out of college mm-hmm. this year. Where you had parents got a college coach on the air. You had parents emailing and all that to the president. He one college coach. All of too. that behind the coach back. Mm. That's mm. crazy. Right. Like, this ain't no this ain't no club sport. This ain't no High school, you know what I mean? This ain't no, this is college, yo. Whatever you, once you send your son off to college, that's what they, they on their own. You feel me? Playing college ball. Like your mother and them can't be involved about your playing time with, right. with my son getting for dinner and all that. Like, it make you wonder about how much that really is going on widespread throughout the entire like NCAA. You feel mm-hmm. me? What? Like, it's crazy. Because they, you know, you see all them celebrities just got exposed for paying. Paying their kids way in the, in the right. school, you feel me? Right. Yep. Like yo, that shit like been happening. They could be putting people on blast like DeAndre Ayton and them, but yo, that shit been happening. Like what the fuck? All these motherfuckers be yo, the motherfucking basketball players ain't the only players getting paid. You feel me? Right. A lot of them soccer motherfuckers be getting paid too. Them hockey motherfuckers too. Well, you if feel they get, me? If they getting the soccer dudes from overseas, you definitely getting paid. You you seen them contracts? Yo, them baseball niggas be getting paid too, yo. Right. Motherfuckers be getting two hundred million, yo. Like like it ain't nothing in baseball. So like yeah, I don't be trying to hear all that. Yeah, they only put the headlines. Um, the basketball niggas. You know what I mean? So do you think dudes should be getting paid? Yeah. To play in college. They, yo, they be making a billion dollars for people and don't see a dime of that. Some of them niggas is homeless now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> shit. You got NBA on, players that's broke. Right, but they 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 didn't even get a shot. Like yo, Ed O'Bannon had a point. Ed o, at one point in time, everybody was saying Ed O'Bannon, Ed O'Bannon. And then I can't see a dime from that. Right. Cause I remember my mother was saying Ed O'Bannon. She didn't even know where the fuck UCLA was. You know what I mean? She probably thought that shit was in Louisiana. The fuck it's all UCLA. <laughs> yeah. And but she knew who Ed O'Bannon was. Right. Yo. That's just to show y'all the nostalgia on that shit. I've been watching that shit for niggas who try 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 fact that's, check me. That's why I mean you can't tell her. You can't tell everybody all your plans. Luckily, there ain't nobody really on talk to you. But you can't tell everybody your plans. But like, yo, that's a big part of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Though. See, like, yo, a lot of people be, and, I, and you know what question I get mostly that bothers me? Yo, you you, you, you done hooping? I be like, damn, yo, I can't. That's all you know for? That's all, yo, every time. Yo, we've had this conversation. Yeah, like, yo, whenever, whenever somebody asks me, yo, you done hooping? I be ready to be like, yo, first of all, yo, I just got done hooping. Like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm not even a whole year removed from playing. Yo, you see me still hooping, still going to the gym, all the above, yo. I'm in the kids, I'm in the gym with the kids on a regular basis and putting my attention into something else right now. Does that mean I gotta be done? Yo, and and, that, and that's the only problem I got with people when you go go to hoop, I mean, go to coach. Oh, no, it's an automatic well, sign that you're done. Well, this is what I'll say, yo. Well, <laughs> yo, man, they might be like, yo, like you don't even know what my plans is. You have no idea what my plan is and why you, why, why is it that I can't, Go right and go left. Nah, bro. So that's what I'm about to say. <laughs> you feel me? Why is that the only thing that you have been known for is playing basketball? That's the that's always the problem. You know what I'm saying? If you're not playing basketball, you're not successful. Well, you're that's not, how people do. do. Your people judge you on what they, they put you on the box. That's yeah, the box. That's, what you're that's only the box. Known for. Right. It's like, yo, I do a lot of things, bro. You feel me? Basketball is only a part of what I do in my life. Right. That's just what you know me for. You exactly. Know me? That's what you want to know me for. No. That's the, the the issue. The issue is. When do you see you out here doing something instead of just giving you love when they can, they act like they ain't know it, know you was doing something, and then they, yeah, 
That's what you want to know me for. You want to know me for open, just like dudes want to know you now for doing the radio as if you don't do anything else. As if you didn't start off somewhere else, or that you might not have another job, but dudes want to know you as coaching lacrosse as if you like, yo, damn, I played pro too. I did this too. I also well, for do me in things. general, like I was telling my man, like, I don't even want to be known for, I mean, it's at the wall. I'm not even going to be doing lacrosse no more, yo. Like, I'm, right. I'm going to have a whole nother lane that I'm in. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's done great things for me. You feel me? It's got me to, you know, a lot of shit in my life and, you know, got me to a lot of places in my life. But, you know, after a while, it's just like, yo, you know, I got other interests and stuff I want to do too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, when people try to put you in a box, yo, and, and try to say, you know, you're only known for this or you're only successful if you're doing this. It's like, yo, that's only what you know me for, yo. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I shit. think that's important. I tell you this much right now, looking at everything that's going on in the league and everything that's going on in the NCAA and how it's all shaking and shaking down, I t it's dudes about to start getting paid. Yeah, I see it coming. They got to, they got know, to start yo. paying them, yo. I mean, at the end of the day, all right, yo, so, so this is what I'll say. So, who getting paid? All the athletes for every sport at every school? How you breaking that down? Yeah. That's the issue, I think. It should be like a stipend or something that, you know what I mean? You get like when you get a refund Everybody, check from. They already give From us the, stipends, uh, though. But in Division Three, they ain't getting stipends. Division Two, some of them might be. First getting of all, the problem, well, Division the problem, One, because the yeah, the they're the problem, money makers. The problem I got with the the Division Three period is that they don't pay niggas. I know. I mean, they don't pay for school. I played Division Three. I know. I don't. I don't like that. How do you not pay? How's it college, and you don't pay for school? Mm. I can't get a scholarship, but I can come here and play. You, you recruit me to come here. That don't even make sense. But even some Division Twos don't really get. I mean, you might get like quarter scholarship. Some of them, some, the, some Division Ones them. don't do it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's it. That's fucking fuckery. I do not want to pay. I do not want. Yo, you shouldn't have a twenty thousand dollar budget and it, it costs. That's one student. You know the nigga Luke May was a walk on. UNC. Yeah. Luke May is a walk on. Shit, I mean, while I was at, even while I was in you Canada. You think they gave him a scholarship after he hit the game with a shot? You better hit. Shit. No, <laughs> no, I was in Canada. We had a couple of okay. dudes that, that tried out. Like, see, the, 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 that's, why, that's why it's funny. The, 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 way that, the way that the NCAA's guidelines are set up or D1 shit is politics. You can tell it's politics. Right. It's not politics when you get to lower level schools. You feel me? Because them tough, them like NAIAs and the, the, all them other different conferences and all that other shit that you could possibly play in, CIAA, the, all that. You want to know what they able to do? Just to be honest, for the most part, they able to bring people there and not have to worry about a whole bunch of major market shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they don't get the major market publicity, major market, all that shit. But yo, they are more than likely to bring, like even in, in JUCO, like nigga, JUCO is slavery. I know. I'm a Juco, Juco product. I'm a Juco product. Juco was slavery. Nigga, mm -hmm. they, nigga, when I was in Kansas, it was 24 of us there. I lived uh, in the I house. Wait, I ain't, no, ho, ho, ho. I got, I'm not going to lie. I got to take that back. Well, why you say slavery? Yo, wait, put it like this, bro. It's, it's in, a, in a basketball sense, I say this. Yo, it's in, in, and I say slavery in, in this regard, because like, maybe that might be too, whatever. No, I'm no, just trying to see what I, you I, mean. I, yo, you had, when I was in Kansas, it was 24 of us there, 24 kids. We had 24 kids poured outside of all the different elements. We had niggas from Indiana, fucking, we had five of us from Baltimore, five dudes from Beaumont, Texas. You had fucking dudes from Milwaukee. You had dudes from Chicago. You had four dudes from Chicago, three dudes from Detroit. You had niggas from all over, all over, bro. Four or five dudes from DC. You got dudes from all over, right? And you got your coaches this. 70 something year old white man, you feel me? Who realistically, yo, you got all us out there, and it ain't nothing but a trial period for the for that for that other wave of kids. You just waiting to see if, if another tw if, if all of all of those kids are indisposable. Period. You're not keeping you're not keeping all 12 of them same. Them, it was no way. Like we knew that from the jump. He used to bring kids there, basically. It was almost like you trying out, but you would be there for months. And the way, like, nigga, that school that we went to is not even a school anymore. Brown Maggie is not a school. Mm. That's just not even a school, bro. When I went there, like, the credits, every kid that went there, the credits 
from that school were not able to transfer into any Division One school. You could not go no higher than D2. If you wanted to go D1, you had to go spend like another summer and then had the red shirt again. And then next thing you know, you might end up only having one year to play. Because your clock is running the moment you start playing Juco and all that type shit. Like, so if you try and play D1, it's a little more difficult. Now, D2, D3, yeah, but D1, that's tough. So, like, yo, you got, tw it's a plant, that's a plantation, bro. You got 24 kids from all different places, yo. All of us was niggas. It was not one black, white person on our team. Only anything close was a Native American named Chief. Mm. Big Bernie, who was 6'11". Big Bernie. You feel me? This guy never showed up and gave us food, none, none of that. We had He had all of us taking out student loans, was giving us money out of his pocket, all that type shit that you, you know what I mean? All that slick shit, which is cool. You feel me? It was cool when they, when they looking out for you, but then now you look at what happened and the ill effects of it, and dudes won't be accountable and be honest, but like the ill effects are, after that, it ended up owing the school money, mm -hmm. being in debt. Because that shit is not real school, yo. He had a, he had kids that had saying you on scholarship, and if you really now not me, but you had if you wanting on scholarship, yo, you was paying too much money because it's a private, bro. Like it was a private institution, yo. I mean, you going to school by the trimester. That shit like going to Phoenix. You feel me? And, and the difference with Phoenix is Phoenix is a real fucking school, though, and it's hard to get a degree from there. But Brown Mac, yeah, every class was full credit. That's unreal. You know what I mean? Yo, you, you when you think about it and you get the line of what college is really about, but like nigga, that shit was a setup. That's mm. slavery. And that happens to a lot of kids who go through JUCO, yo. Whether for basketball, yo, they end up going out there, coach say it's gonna be one thing, but, but, but look at them. How many kids, how many niggas we know from around the way that end up going to JUCO? And yeah, sometimes it's their fault too. Uh, I was just about to say a lot of times it's their fault. A lot of niggas go there. A lot of times, but like I'm speaking from do. the perspective of a nigga that yeah, went there. Yeah, no, that's your experience. This I, your experience. I actually went there and did what I was supposed to do. Yeah, that's your and experience. And a lot of the other dudes that came there did what they were supposed to do and not seen. Right. Like yo, oh shit. Like next thing you know, this dude getting sent home. Or this dude getting 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 told, like, yeah, you're gonna come back next year. And ne that next year, out of all of those guys that was there with me, because I didn't come back. I knew it was a plantation. I said, This is a plantation. I'm gone. When I get a chance, I'm gone. Because there's no way we're supposed to be getting this type of money. Bro, I was getting crazy buku money for a college kid that was in JUCO. And it was all coming from financial aid and all that shit. Like, that shit just didn't make sense. Right. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, that shit just didn't make sense. A lot of niggas ended That's because you weren't supposed to be getting it. So now, yo, a lot of them niggas owe money to fucking fast for and Sally man, nigga, that should have had your credit and shit fucked up. Right Sally made mafia. Shout out to them for the loan. You, mm. and, and where's he at? Still, killing. where's the nigga at that got you out there when you Still calling killing. and try to figure any of shit out? Where's the fucking school at? You can't even call a school. No, they get a transcript. They train. They train and say you can't do nothing for you. Nah, yeah, I, I just well, I mean that's that's a crazy experience you had, bro. I had two different experiences. Yeah. Now, 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 Howard wasn't like that. Howard, nigga, I fucked up. I went there and I didn't do what I fuck I was supposed to do. I right. was straight out of high school and I already was fucking up in high school. I went there and fucked up again. It was just, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm real enough to keep it accountable. But mm -hmm. that nigga that I went there and had the right, I was there from June, bro. I was there in June, the summer before, with me and Kev. Right. Without that bitch in June. We skipped our whole summer to go out there to get our grades right to play. Mm. And that shit was like, yo, we when I got out, I was like, damn, yo, the season about to start, he's still bringing in niggas. Mm. Yo, yo was still I'm like damn right. like we I thought we and he telling everybody every day like yeah y'all good we, I love this team this is gonna be the you going and they went to the national championship lost in the national championship game you feel me and all the above but it was like yo bro you 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 and, and then what and then what I watched it like I, I call my cousin right now like I, I've seen a coach slap a nigga when kids say people create coaches crazy like I seen a coach real live treat a nigga like it was slavery slap a nigga and tell a nigga you better not fucking move while while I'm taking your jersey off. Wow! And slap it, slap the shit out of him for real. Damn. You know me because he because he, he wouldn't That's stop tough. moving, and then go <laughs> and then go right back into the and, and go right into the huddle in the locker room and pray. That if that ain't that, if that ain't slavery, slavery. I don't know what is. Man. You know what that's, I mean? That's Yo, powerful yeah, right there. Yeah, that's, 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 nigga, and, and, and guess what? Guess what? The nigga was 27 years old playing at JUCO. Trying to find a way out, and that was his last straw. Yeah, grown ass man. Yo, should have smacked him. Yo, he was supposed to fucking snap his neck.